popular culture and television and everything else had had a lot of black representation. But this is entirely unknown to people who've grown up from the 2000s onwards, who've then had this impression of their society in Britain as in America sort of shoved into them that this happened. Sorry, I've got to give this example as well. Jesse Norman. When Jesse Norman died recently, her, obit- her her obituaries talked about her the fact that she was a black soprano as being the top thing, as if no black soprano had succeeded in America, or that people have been trying to ignore her success for years. You go, you're willing to take apart a highly successful career and replay it in solely racial terms. Of course, if you're a young person reading about this, the first thing you're going to think, my gosh, nobody told told you that Jesse Norman recorded Wagner with Carrie Anne in the 1970s. You know, if, 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 if America was such a racist society, that wouldn't have happened. But they're only told the racism. And here's the other follow-on problem from that. And this is the deep thing that we get into. And it brings us to the Nietzsche point. We're in this situation where the hellish lack of education in America about America coincides with the hellish lack of information in American minds about the outside world. One of the reasons I add the context I do about slavery, about empire in the war on the West, is because there's no damn context in our time. Does one in a million Americans know that whilst the transatlantic slave trade was going on, abominable and wicked as it was, there was also a slave trade going east, an even bigger slave trade. Why do we not know about the Arab slave trade? Because the 18 million African, black Africans stolen, sold by their neighbours to the Arabs were castrated so there would be no more generations of, of black slaves in the Arab world. I think our mutual friend Ayan Hirsi Ali first told me some years ago that when she lived in Saudi Arabia as a girl, they were referred to as Abid because they were from Somalia, they were black. Abid is uh, Abid, plural, Arabic for slave. The word still used in the Middle East for black people is slave. Um, so, And we're also talking there in terms of mass castration with genocide. Of course it was a genocide. And so when people say that the, the, the transatlantic slave trade was a genocide, it clearly wasn't. It was a wicked practice, but it clearly wasn't that, whereas the, 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 the trade east clearly was. Now, now at this point, of course, the, the wisecrackers say, well, that's just what about we No, this is what we used to call context, which in historic terms is crucial. Why do why does Thomas Jefferson mull as he does in a letter, which again is completely misrepresented by the the race hucks, the Ibrahim X. Kendi? Why is Thomas Jefferson not able to 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 recognise that the races are actually completely related? Because at that time nobody knew anywhere in the world the 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 debate about whether or not the races were related for, or came from the same stock or different stock wasn't solved for another century after Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson in his day, as I cite in the book, is extraordinarily forward-looking by modern understanding. He moles in this private letter that Kendi accuses him for racism over that the native um, in- Indians, as they said at the time, Native Americans, appear in Jefferson's uh, view to be capable of being just as educated as the white man, the Europeans, within about a generation. And Jefferson says, I suspect that in a few generations, I don't know, but I suspect within a few generations, with with black Americans, it'll be the same thing. That they'll come to the same standard. That's very forward looking. Why didn't he know more? Because he didn't. Because nobody knew that the races were related, and they didn't solve it for decades. What, what and- amazes me, I had had a conversation with a highly educated, Ivy League educated, young man, who argued that racism was invented mm. by white people, of course, as like colonialism began, as as if there is not. And has not been for a couple hundred thousand years tribal sentiment yes. that is part of our DNA that inevitably will lead people to be initially skeptical of people who look different yes. than them. In, and that we have a history throughout the entire world of this happening again and again and again is, and again and again and again. It's and again not just a, a history. It is history. Right. History is people going to a place where people don't look like them and trying to find out whether you can have a peaceful accommodation with them or not. And most of history was or not. 